hello beautiful and welcome back to my channel or welcome the first time if you haven't been here before. It's time for this week's new makeup releases and this is the series on YouTube where I chat about all the new makeup releases, sneak peeks and announcements from the past week. I do this every Sunday on my channel. If you're not subscribed, I'd love to see you subscribe because I do this every Sunday and I also do a bunch of other videos in the weeks. I do know right now that maybe not all of us are looking for new makeup to buy, but it's still interesting to see what the brands are putting out there. It's interesting to see what the brands thought was going to be our spring look of <laughs> 2020. But I do realize that maybe not all of us are interested in shopping right now. But listen, there's always the future. Things may change. And if nothing else, we can just roast some makeup releases. I did notice a thing though. I don't know if you read my description box. My description box is always filled to the brim. I always use all the letters that I'm allowed to. You're allowed to use 5,000 letters and I always max it at every Sunday in these episodes. And last week I talked about the new Huda lip balms and the release for those have been pushed back to May. And this is also true of one of the Anastasia Beverly Hills releases. We won't be talking about this this weekend because I already know it's been pushed back to May. And the thing is that some brands are just pushing back their releases right now because it is, I mean, we're in the middle of a crisis right now. And it's interesting to see which brands do and which brands don't. And maybe we can think about like why they do it. Listen, the reason why they're pushing it back, it's not because they're trying to be nice or trying to be our friends. They're trying to make money. Brands aren't our friends. Brands don't have feelings. Brands aren't here looking after us. They're just pushing it back to hope to make more money in the future. Is that a bad thing? No necessarily we are in a market economy after all but just realize that maybe the reason why some brands aren't pushing back their releases might be because they're under a contract and they need to <laughs> release it now or that they're actually not in a financial good state right now where they can take the hit and release it later some brands just kind of need to release stuff now and i'm thinking specifically of indie brands and i'm also thinking about maybe some brands that aren't doing as good as like Huda and Anastasia is doing. So please do remember that, that the reason why some brands are not releasing stuff now, I don't think it's mainly because they're trying to be considerate. Maybe some of them do have that in the back of their mind as well, but it is mainly because they're hoping to make money out of their releases and releasing stuff right now maybe isn't the best financial decision because a lot of us are not looking to shop right now. I mean, I know for myself that looking towards new makeup maybe isn't my first priority, but I also know that when I get a bit stressed, I do stress by a bit. And I, I'm sure that some of you are exactly like me. So let's just be smart with our purchases. That was a long and windy rant. I'm sure nobody wanted to hear that. If you agree with me, if you have any comments regarding that, do let me know down below in the comments and let's just get into the news. Okay, let me scoochy scoochy a bit so that you can see the pictures that I'm gonna put up here on the side. I didn't film this look, but I filmed it for Instagram. So it's coming kinda soon. I don't really know when because me editing right now, it's not been my top priority. Let me save the thing that I was kind of eyeing towards the end and let's start with something fun. Let's start with the 1st of April, like the April April's Fool's palettes. The first one was this one from Morphe. And to be fair, do we even know if this is an April's Fool? Because this isn't that far from some of their releases. Because they do tend to do an all brown palette and then just throwing something in there. I mean, they did have a palette that was like all brown and red with like one or two greens. I, I don't feel like this is that off. <laughs> Does that mean? <laughs> but I mean, obviously this is an April Fool's, but maybe, maybe this is a way of also like acknowledging that they know that they're releasing a lot of palettes with similar colors. They know that a lot of their palettes have a lot of browns in them. And I think that it shows something about a brand when it's like, not afraid to make a joke out of themselves. I, I do kind of like that, to be honest. I mean, did I giggle a bit when I saw this? Yes. Did I instantly know it was an April Fool's thing? Also, yes. There is a second April Fool's thing I want to talk about, and this was a bit more sneaky, I would say, and there are probably more April Fool's things out there. If you saw any, let me know so I can have a peek. But this is the one from Beauty Bay's own brand, and this is the... Uh, pss, 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 Meow or never palette. <laughs> Honestly, I buy this. <laughs> I love cats. I'm a cat person. The thing that gives it away is, of course, that there is a leopard print pan in here. And I honestly, I don't really know if they would be able to do that with the like the, the price range that they are in right now. Because I do think that making specific like pants like that it, it probably costs a bit more money but i do think it's it's pretty funny isn't this funny i think this is funny so it says coming soon but obviously it's it's not coming soon 
get to the April Fool's palette. But I thought that this was cute. This was not as obvious as the Morphe one, but it was cute. And it's not as stupid as the Tarte one from a year or two ago. Was it two years ago? Yeah, two years ago. Who remembers that debacle? That was... <sighs> the time when Tarte thought wearing colorful eyeshadows was a joke. Wow. So I'm not really out to be shopping anything right now. I've actually been diving into my collection and wearing some old fun things or things that I have hauled a while ago and just using them again, like this one for instance. These are things that I've uh, talked about a while back on my channel. But there is one thing that I am slightly intrigued in and I'll leave that towards the end. This one also, I will say slightly intrigued, but I don't think I'm intrigued to the point where I'll actually buy it. But I think it looks pretty. This is the Dominique Cosmetics Skin gloss singles. I don't remember. She released a palette that had very bulky and questionable <laughs> questionable packaging and this is singles. I don't think it's the same formula. Is it the same formula? I was under the impression that those were powders but maybe they were creams because I feel like these are creams. They're called gloss because these are creams, right? And the other ones were powders? Let me check. You know what? I'm gonna check. Okay, so I'm looking at it right now and it seems to be three powders and one cream. So I'm guessing it's the cream formula from that palette that how has been transformed into singles with four different colors. And maybe that one color from the palette is one of the singles. Although the one from the palette looks more champagne and this one that I'm seeing in the picture here looks more pearl. Wow. I'm really... In, in Sweden we'll call it uh, cleaving hairs when it's like so little difference like does it really matter if you're just cleaving hairs it's still very thin so i don't know about i mean champagne and pearl but i feel like there's a difference i don't know if this is the same color that was in the palette but four different ones coming they're coming on april 7th which is in a couple of days and it's going to be available on her site and then it's coming to her retailers i do think she's available at both sephora and some other place not sure, but I'm pretty sure she launched at another retailer as well. And she's also available at Beauty Bay. And Beauty Bay does get her items quite quickly. So if you're in Europe or if you are not in US and you want to buy from Dominique Cosmetics, I would say wait it out and just get it at Beauty Bay because Beauty Bay is a pretty nice place to shop at. I do recommend them thoroughly. Oh, $25 each. I don't think that that's that bad. The packaging looks really cute. Okay. Like I said, slightly intrigued, but probably not intrigued enough to like go out of my way and pick it up, especially not at this time. But I do think it's a pretty cute release and it, I, I'm happy to see her branch out into more things. I do hope she comes out with powder, highlighters and compacts as well. I would definitely be interested in that. This is something that I was tagged in and you were like, quads! <laughs> I am living my happy quad life. I hope there's more six pans coming. I'm actually wearing this one today, the Berries uh, by Juvia's Place, and this is a six pan. I want to see more six pans, okay? Is it, is it that hard? Can I just get some six pans? But these are from Alien Cosmetics. Uh, two quads so far. I don't know if more are coming. They did allude to that there were more coming. One is like a minty blue with some... Is that a light lavender and some kind of a shimmer? And the other one is an orange, a yellow, a bright blue, and it seems like a light lime green shimmer. I think both of them look really pretty. I have actually bought some quads lately. I still haven't received them, but I don't think I'm in the market for new quads. I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to playing with the ones I ordered. I bought them a while. I bought, I bought the one for Makeup Revolution, the one they released, and I bought that just when it was released. Was that like a week and a half or two weeks ago? I talked about it last week, but it had been released for like a couple of days, maybe a week and a half ago. And then several, several weeks ago, I did order the Love Lux Beauty uh, calls as well. And those haven't reached me yet because they're from they're shipped from US. So right now not in the market for quads. But if you're interested in seeing some more quads on my channel, do let me know because I can definitely film with those if you're interested. I talked about this MAC collection a while ago and this seems to be the summer collection from MAC. MAC always brings out like the bells and whistles when it comes to the holiday collection and when it comes to the summer collection. They usually do a special packaging. Sometimes they do new shades. Most of the time they do re-releases. Repromote Mac, that should be their tagline. Mac, we'll always find a way to repromote shit. <laughs> Hashtag shady. But I will say that those red coral orange lipsticks together with this burnt like bronze packaging, they do look like a summer and a half. Not gonna lie, they look so cute. I feel like that is something that I would love to whip out of my purse or bring it on vac oh, vacation. 
Whew. Yeah. But anyways, I do think that those look really cute. The bronzers look light. Are those even bronzers? Because they look light. Those foiled eyeshadows, those foiled eyeshadows got great reviews. People seem to love them. The colors are boring, according to me. They're so safe. I wish they could have thrown it. Since these are singles, couldn't they just have thrown in like that lipstick, that like bright coral orange like foil? That would have been so beautiful. So I don't really know why we're not doing that, but apparently we're not doing that. I'm looking at the colors of the lipsticks. It is uh, a la plage, set to sizzle, can do, coat, the more, and wham. I don't recognize any of those shades actually. I would be very surprised if none of them are repromotes. Is that mean? Am I being mean? Sorry. Am I sorry? The can do is the one that is a bright orange. I am. I have a, a Mac store here in my town. Obviously, now is not the time to go swatching, but I'm always on the hunt for the best glossy lip and the best sheer lip color. Both of those are just yum and an orange on. Just look at my lips today. Mm. An orange is my preferred lip color, to be honest. If I can only pick... Okay, let's be fair. If I can only pick one lip color to wear for the rest of my life, it'd be a nude. But if I could pick a second one, it'd be an orange. Easy. Because I love an orange lip. So, I feel like I need to see it in store. But... If I get the chance to see it in store and it looks really pretty, maybe, because I am always open for a orange lipstick, but overall, I feel like that pack, the packaging is more pretty than the products, but I do think that if you are just looking to look bronze and fresh and summer-like, maybe this is perfect. I'm being mean. Maybe it's just me always hoping for some bright colors. Okay, scratch all that. <laughs> Moving on. This was something that was a bit confusing, uh, maybe because I'm not editorial enough to wear stuff like this, but this is the new Gucci Beauty items. Uh, Gucci Beauty had released some lip color... Let me back it up. Gucci Beauty was available before, huge flop apparently, they pulled it back and then they re-released in a new range to just, I don't know, they just redid the whole line and they released some lipsticks and then they released a mascara and now they're releasing brow pens and an all over face and lip gloss. This face gloss? I don't know what to do with that. I got one from Linda Halbert in PR and I, I just don't, I'm not editorial enough for that. I don't know what to do with it. I just feel dull because <laughs> I just I don't know what to do with it it's not that it's a horrible product I just don't use stuff like I don't like being sticky <laughs> that was she said but I just don't like being sticky so this kind of confuses me but on the other hand it's very like being a glossy smeary makeup it's very Gucci all over face and lip gloss Gloss for eyes, lips, and cheeks. Yeah, I'm guessing this is probably the same as the Linda Halberg one. If you're living in Europe, I kind of recommend you to get that one instead. It is apparently a very good all-over gloss. It's just not something that I can get into. And it is more affordable than this, and you will probably get a lot more uh, product. If you are a working makeup artist, I do think that something like that is great to have in your kit. And that one also comes in a squeezy tube, which is much more hygienic than just having a pot like this. Even though, I mean, getting something Gucci is nice. And spoiler alert while ago, like a while while ago, I actually did buy something from Gucci and I will be hauling that because I bought it in the beginning of March. I will be hauling that tomorrow. I'll be having my monthly haul tomorrow. That's going to be the things I bought and received in March. It is going to look like a normal haul, but I think that April's haul is going to be pretty bleak. Pretty bleak to be honest, but yeah. If you're interested in getting some haul action that's coming tomorrow and that and that haul will include not only one but two Gucci products. So. Oops. This is an indie brand called Cara Beauty and they are releasing three palettes. There are very <laughs> weed inspired. Weed isn't legal in Sweden, not even as medicine. There is like no way to get hold of it without being like a criminal if I'm not mistaken. I don't really have a, a stance on it myself like I honestly I don't 
I don't, it's like, we all have hills to die on. This isn't mine, this isn't mine. But they are releasing three palettes. I do think the palettes look pretty. It is one orange yellow, it is one green blue, and it's one purple pink with one yellow. Yellow together with purple pinks are beautiful. And I do think that palettes look nice. They do have some press glitters in them though. I'm not all about that live. This isn't really, like, I'm not interested. You know, there are themes where you're like, I really want to own that and then there are themes where you're like I don't have a horse in this race like I honestly I don't don't care and this is one of those themes I'm like this isn't part of my lifestyle this isn't something I care about and it's also press glitter so I'm gonna skip out but they're only $14.99 so I don't know and I don't know what kind of quality you get with that many shades for $14.99 but if you want to try it it is available I'll link it down below. This is a new collab, and this is a collab between Lunar Skies Cosmetics, I've talked about them before, and Blonde Taki. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that. They have released this very beautiful rainbow palette and some lashes. I think that is correct. I'm showing the palette here, but there are some lashes included in this collection as well. The palette is a rainbow palette with some more options. There are some more peachy pinks. There are some glitters in here, and I do think that it is a pretty rainbow palette. I haven't tried the formula, I have no idea. I do like that there is a red, a peach, a pink matte, and then a pink shimmer. It is a yellow, an orange, and a darker orange matte, and then there is like a coral shimmer, dark green, mid green, green shimmer, a white, two purple mattes, one blue matte, and then there is like, it seems to be a green turquoise blue, dark blue glitter. I'm not all about the glitters, but at least it's only one so you can use it as a topper or an accent. If it's gonna be pressed glitters in the palette, at least just let it be one let it be the accent because most of us don't use glitters every day unless we're Hannah Louise Poston and all hail the glitter queen but I personally I reach for glitters now and then and to have just one fine to have just one like I'll let it slide I do think that this palette looks really pretty uh, if you haven't seen my rainbow palette collection I did have a video up last week with all of my rainbow palettes like a flat lay video showing you all of my palettes really up close and also telling you which ones are my favorites and if you've seen the video you know that I do not need any more rainbow palettes so I'm gonna be skipping on this one this is a cute one I like when brands are trying new things sometimes it turns into something that I'm like, ooh, the diffs really need to be invented. And then sometimes it turns into, huh, that's really cute. Didn't know that this could be a thing. And that is the collab between Innisfree and Mentos. Pretty sure that Innisfree is a Korean makeup brand. Mentos is the candy. Yes, the candy Mentos. And they are coming out with powders. And the powder, it's like a little powder, not compacts, but like packagings. And it's a loose powder inside for like sebum control, for like blotting during the day. And all of the different uh, packagings have the same colors as the Mentos. I think it's super cute. It's like cherry, mint, melon, grape, peach, and lemon. And I'm pretty sure that they're going to have a scent corresponding to the different ones. I actually would love to have a mint one all about that life I, I honestly i would really really love to have the mint one i mint so much mint candy mint scent mint anything i love mint so 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 much these are coming soon it says coming april 2020 it's only going to be ten dollars each and they're probably going to be available at yes style so i will link to yes style down below but it's not an affiliate link or anything like that i usually use affiliate links because when you shop through my links doesn't cost you anything extra but I do get some money back and that money is the money that I'm able to buy things to review for for you <laughs> basically on this channel but I don't have an affiliate link to Yes Style but I do love Yes Style and I have shopped from Yes Style twice and I've been really enjoying both the customer service that I've gotten and the products that I have received. I'm actually going to be ranking some of them in my ranking video this upcoming week. Catrice has announced their spring 2020 collection and it seems to be all about the glow. It seems to be glowy powder cheek products and also glowy liquid highlighters. It all looks really pretty. Blush duos, one shimmery, one matte, liquid highlighters, highlighters, and then a like a fan brush. I can't hate. Oh, I hate fan brushes so much for highlighters, but I've heard that big fan brushes for bronzer is amazing. Haven't tried it yet. Really wish I could. So I'll try and see where this is going to launch. It is launching April slash May. So it's coming soon, but if you are interested in Catrice and you're interested in some more... I mean, I personally think that these look pretty generic. I won't be picking these up, but maybe you are a diehard Catrice fan and this really, really intrigues you. This really intrigues me though, and I'm not... This... Angie? You're not gonna make an order from this company just to buy one thing, okay? Listen, are you listening? Better pay attention because it's the Kristen Lee Cosmetics Birthday Bash Multi Chrome Highlighter. Oh, 
This looks so good. I really, really think that this looks so pretty. And this is the thing. It might be the Prada photo that's making it look this amazing and this yummy. And then you get it in real life and you're like, oh, it's just a highlighter. You never know, honestly, but it looks really pretty. It looks like it's a golden green with some pink flecks. I'm almost salivating. I think it looks so good. This is beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Not gonna make an order overseas to buy one thing, especially not in this time in history, but I do think it looks really pretty. And yeah, wow, it looks beautiful. Another highlighter that has been released, and this is from Linda Halberg, uh, is it Virgo? This, this highlighter, wait, I already have it. Well, I don't have the new packaging, maybe I should say, but I have it in this face palette. This is the Infinity palette. This is an all-in-one face palette and also it can be used as eyeshadows. And it is this highlighter up here. This shade has always been available in this palette. Uh, so it basically is this highlighter, this lighting is not ideal for this highlighter, but it is a beautiful, like peachy gold, sheeny, smooth, wonderful highlighter. It has always been available in this face palette and now it is available in a bigger compact as a highlighter. I'm guessing that this was the favorite shade of people and they wanted to be able to buy it as a single. I do think that in the future, uh, Linda Halberg will probably re-release this palette with new packaging and pans that you can take out and replace because this is a favorite palette of a lot of people, especially here in Scandinavia. This is basically an all-in-one palette. You can do basically all your powder needs with this palette. It's actually a really, really nice palette. So I'm not surprised that they're releasing it as singles, but I was kind of surprised that they didn't do the re-release of this with like exchangeable pans and then just being able to buy the pan that you pan. Because <laughs> a lot of people do pan a couple of shades and just want to get that one instead of getting a full palette. But I do think they probably will do that in the future. In a way, I think it's smart that they're releasing the highlighter as a single, like in the compact like this, because most people, when it comes to face things, they just want to get the juicy highlighter. And it is a beautiful shade. And if you did pick this up and you don't own the Infinity palette, I don't think you'll be disappointed in this highlighter at all. It is a very, very very beautiful shade. I don't have it. I am on the Linda Halberg PR list. I don't know if I'll be receiving this or not, but if, if I do, I'll show you more up close how it looks, probably on my Instagram or maybe in a tutorial or something. But yeah, this is already available and it's like not news. It's just sem semi-news. This is a product from Too Faced and this is the Melted Chocolate Matte Liquid Eyeshadow, $21 each. Very, very neutral colors, some leaning a bit more aubergine some leaning a bit more rust and orange. Definitely not something for me. What I feel with this product is I think it needs to see people use it. Is it a product that's like you paint it on and it's stuck so that you can use it for cut creases? Or is it something that you can blend? Or is it something that could be used as a like a base? Like does it does it leave a bit like grip so you can use it as a base? What is it? What is this product? I, I don't really understand what this product is. And I think that it is not releasing I think it's releasing for a couple of weeks. And when it does, I'm hoping until then that they will have clear the air on like what product is this what is it meant for when i hear a matte liquid shadow i honestly cannot for the life of me understand what is that for because there is no place for that in my collection there's no place for that in my routine and i just think i need some kind of explanation as to like why i should be interested in this because right now i'm just like matte liquid shadow Thanks, I hate it. Stila has released their summer 2020 collection. I don't exactly know where, but I'll try and find it and link it down below. This is an eight pan palette. There is some creamy cheek sticks and there are some glosses. I think it's an existing gloss formula that they are just releasing some more colors in. I do think that like stick blushes or like stick face products right now are so in. So I do think it's a smart thing to release that. The eyeshadow palette is very unexpected and I, don't know if I love it or if I hate it. It is called A Road Less Traveled and I kind of do agree because this is a color combo that I can't remember if I've ever seen. It is like browns and pinks with a red, a forest green, a light gold and a mint. It's very unexpected. A Road Less Traveled? Yeah, definitely. I also think that a lot of people are not that interested in the road. <laughs> there is a reason why the road is less traveled, let's be honest, but I don't think it looks 
horrible. I actually think it looks really cute. I will say like hats off for trying something new and doing something different. I'm not gonna go out of my way to buy this because like I said I have some quads heading my way and I've been diving into my collection so much these past weeks and it's been a lot of fun. But if it hadn't been the time that we're in right now and if I already hadn't had some things coming my way I actually might have picked this up because I don't think I don't think it's ugly, I think it looks really cute. And there's not a lot of people talking about Stila on YouTube, which is probably because they're not sending out a lot of PR, to be honest. But honestly, I, I wouldn't mind trying this, but I'm not gonna go out of my way to buy it. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Oh, there were more Mac. I forgot, Mac is, Mac is. <laughs> Mac is always releasing a lot of things, so for them, like with Colourpop, so for them to take a break would mean that they would either have to scrap some of their collections or release like 10 collections a week in a couple of months. I'm wondering what Colourpop is going to do, because there's probably so many collections that they were meaning to release now that didn't get released. I'm wondering if they're still going to release them. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you think that Colourpop are still going to release the things they had planned for this time when they are being quarantined? Or do you think they're going to scrap it and just move on from after when this is over? Hmm. I wonder what I think myself. Part of me thinks they're just going to release all of it. Part of me thinks that they might just scrap it. Huh. I don't know. It's like a toss-up, to be honest. But this is the MAC Cosmetics Powder Kiss Collection. It is a that blotted lip liquid that I can't... I, I, it's, not, it's not for me. It's not the kind of lip that I'm going for. Uh, although I will say they have more than one orange color in here, and that does draw me in a bit. But I think it'd be a safer bet for me to get the lossy orange lipstick if any and then there are the powder kiss soft matte eyeshadows and it seems to be not really neutrals but a lot of oranges peaches and pinks and then a couple of neutrals i'm guessing that these products are meant to be a matchy matchy with the powder kiss bullet lipsticks that they already have that is actually quite a nice formula i do have one of those lipsticks in my collection i have one of the new ones, who's surprised? Not, not, not this bitch. But I do think that that is a really nice formula. I actually really, really do like that formula. It looks so good. Oh, I really want to use that one. Maybe I'll use that one for tomorrow. It's such a beautiful lip formula. So maybe if the liquid are like, but that one is a bit creamy, but still, not, mm, yeah, I still don't think like a liquid blotted lip. I don't think that that is for me. If that is for you, Maybe this release could be for you because there's a lot of really cool colors, but honestly This isn't targeted towards me. So I'm I'm a pass. Okay pass This is a collaboration between Ulta Beauty and the Marvel's Black Widow. Black Widow has been the, the premiere of the movie has been postponed due to cinemas being closed right now It was the same with the Colourpop and Mulan collection like the makeup has been released But the movie has been postponed due to uh, everyone being in quarantine and like the world's, I wanted to say ending, but it's not. It's just the world's on break, okay? The world is on a break and so is the like the movie premiere. So both Black Widow and Milan is going to premiere later on instead. But the makeup collection is still pushing on as, as planned. Like I said in the beginning, it's probably due to different kind of contracts and they just have already planned out the entire year and it's not that easy to just halt things. So this collection is basically lip glosses, some lip duos with lip liners and lipsticks, face palettes and eyeshadow palette brushes and some pouches. Not interested in any of this. I'm not even interested in the movie itself. It seems to be very basic and I do think that this collection is mainly trying to target the people that are Marvel fans, maybe not as much the people that are die-hard makeup fans. And that is probably the tactic behind a lot of these collaborations that are not with like beauty gurus or between like beauty <laughs> different beauty related things when it's with something that's outside of the beauty community the collections normally target the people that are not already in the beauty community it's like a way to drag them in like come to the dark side we have more eyeshadow over here <laughs> so i don't think that this is like the collection that's meant for me and maybe not for you either unless you are a die-hard marvel fan i'm not really and i'm also not really drawn into any of this so i'm gonna pass on this whole thing even though it is from ulta and i can't Get a hold. I can get a hold of any anything if I just really put my mind to it, but I'm not because I'm not that interested. So, passing on that one as well. Okay, let me talk about the last thing, the thing that I'm actually contemplating whether or not I'm gonna buy it, and that is the new two new items from Natasha Nona. She is releasing, or she has released two mini products. There's one mini eyeshadow palette that's called the Mini Retro, and then it is a mini blush highlighter hybrid. 
products and it's called the mini bloom i love both of these products to be honest and I might pick them up if I see them. The date for Europe, all the European retailers, both Sephora and like Cool Beauty and all of those retailers that are not like US, it's like to be announced. I'm thinking probably it's gonna be later April. So my plan is to just not really buy anything in April and maybe if these show up and I'm able to get them, I might get these. Uh, or maybe not, but depending on how all of this like plays out. It's like different from day to day, it's like ooh, you never really know. So right now I am really interested in this and you know I feel that like ooh, I want to own this, I want to play with this, I feel like this would fit in with my collection. I love Natasha Nona's quality, I love her cheek products and I have been really tr wanting to try one of those mini eyeshadow palettes. So it really ticks a lot of boxes for me, but the stars really do have to align. <laughs> when this is being released in Europe for me to actually pick it up. But this is the product where I'm feeling like I wish I owned this. So yeah, I'm, re I'm really interested in picking this up. I saw that Samantha March picked it up and I also saw that Mel Thompson picked it up. So I'll probably check those videos out from those girls because I really do trust their opinions and see how they feel about it. Because since this isn't being released in Europe yet for a couple of weeks probably, I'm not gonna be reviewing it specifically because nobody is interested in the review a couple of weeks later. That's just a YouTube game for you. I'll still mention it in a ranking video of some sorts, but or maybe I'll do looks, but I won't do dedicated videos on things that are like weeks and weeks after because it's just, there are so many other people doing that better and doing it like ahead of time. But I am really interested in product and I actually might pick it up. That's the one that I'm like, ooh, hmm. Maybe. Let me know, are you interested in that product? Did that like look appealing to you? I know that the eyeshadow palette is available at Sephora US and I know that the cheek product, the Mini Bloom, is available both at Sephora US and also at Beautylish. I don't think the Beautylish has the mini eyeshadow palette. I don't really know why, but for some reason they do not. But yeah, that is it for this week. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about these releases and I will see you tomorrow for my monthly haul.